looking at general monohybrid crosses, we want to find out the outcome when we mix two homozygous individuals for differing characteristics, when we mix a homozygous individual with a heterozygous individual, and when we mix two heterozygous individuals. The example we'll be looking at is that of the Indian ringneck parakeet, where green feather color is dominant over blue feather color. We represent the green allele by the capital letter G and the blue allele by the small letter G. So an individual with the green phenotype, shown as a green bird, would either be homozygous, homo meaning the same, having two capital letter Gs or two of the green alleles, or it could be heterozygous, having a green allele, capital G, and a blue allele, but because the green allele is dominant, the phenotype will still show as a visible green bird. A blue bird, on the other hand, being recessive, can only be homozygous, having two of the recessive alleles. So in the first cross, we're looking at the parents both being homozygous, one for green and one for blue. So if the male here being green, his genotype would be capital G, capital G, homozygous for green, and the blue bird, the female, would have small letter G, small letter G, two of the blue alleles. Now, these individuals, they'd undergo meiosis and form gametes, the male having capital letter G, capital letter G, when it separates in gamete formation, every single one of the gametes and the sperm cells produced by him would have a capital letter G. And the female, each one of her gametes, the ova that are produced, would all have the small letter G. And during the process of fertilization, the sperm with the capital G will fuse with the ovum, which would have a small letter G. And here we find that now the offspring that would be produced, the diploid cells, would all have the genotype capital letter G and small letter G. The capital letter G coming from the male green bird and the small letter G coming from the blue female. So here we find 100%, four out of four of the offspring here having a heterozygous genotype. The phenotype of all of these birds would be green because the green allele of the male would be dominant over the blue allele. Right? Remember, in reality, the sperm cells and the egg cells would not have a color. It's just here to represent the color of the allele that they carry. Now, if we're looking at a heterozygous green bird and a homozygous blue bird. Right, so the phenotypes are green and blue and the genotypes of the parent, the one being heterozygous and the other one being homozygous recessive. Now, when they undergo the process of meiosis for gamete formation, in the male, 50% of the sperm cells would carry the green allele and 50% of them would have the blue allele. Whereas the female having only blue alleles, all of the egg cells produced would have the blue allele. Now, at the time of fertilization, the egg cells have a 50% chance of being fertilized by one of the sperm cells carrying the green allele and a 50% chance of being fertilized by one of the sperm cells carrying the blue allele. And if we look at now the offspring, the genotype ratio, you're going to find that two out of four of the offspring would have a capital letter G and a small letter G being heterozygous, and 50%, the other two out of the four, would have a small letter G with a small letter G being homozygous recessive. And the ratio of the phenotype would be 50% being green and 50% being blue. Right, so this is the case when you have a heterozygous individual being crossed with a homozygous recessive individual. If you had a heterozygous individual crossed with a homozygous dominant individual, so you had a green bird on the side, which was capital G, capital G, you'd get a 50% ratio of capital G, small g, and a 50% of capital G, capital G. But the phenotype, all of those birds, 100% would have been green. In the third cross, we're looking at two heterozygous individuals, right? So here, both the male and female would have the green phenotype because green is dominant. And in their genotypes, they are heterozygous. They've got a green and a blue allele. 
but obviously the green being dominant is showing in the phenotype. Now, when they undergo gamete formation, both the sperm cells of the male as well as the egg cells of the female, 50% of them would have the green allele and 50% of them the blue allele. And when we have fertilization, you could have a green with blue, blue with blue, green with green, and blue with green. Okay, there are variations here due to random fertilization, but if it happens many a time, uh, if the sample size is very large, you're going to come to the same ratio or very close to this ratio. So here, if you look at what we've got in the F1 in the offspring, the genotypes, we find that one out of four is green and green, homozygous dominant, that's 25%. Then we've got green mixed with blue in two out of four, which is 50% of the offspring. And blue mixed with blue would be one out of four or 25% of the offspring in as far as the genotype is concerned. Now, if you look at the phenotype ratio of the offspring, what colors they would be, this one has green and blue, but because green is dominant, this would be a green individual. All right, so that first one there would be green. This one has blue and blue, so it would be blue. This individual has green and green, which makes it green. And this one has green and blue, but green being dominant would make it green. So if we have to look at the ratio, you've got three green is to one blue, which gives you 75% of the offspring being green and 25% being blue. We hope that this video has assisted you in understanding the various crosses that there are and the predicted outcome that you should get when you have different parents. Please like, comment, and subscribe.